there are many enigmatic, unexplained ancient mysteries which we have covered here on our channel. Many mysterious ruins which are slowly revealing their secrets to us. However, what must be the most intriguing of the historical subcategories has to be the Oparts, out of place artifacts that have been found all over Earth. These mystifying items are the only subject within the field which can shed their own very unique lights upon the distant past and sometimes hard to believe possibilities attached to their ages. The island of Samos within Greece is home to a number of these particular artifacts. 1.5 kilometers off the coast of Turkey, this small island has a big history. Within the island's capital museum is a wide range of very impressive artifacts. The most interesting among the collection is undoubtedly the strange bronze artifact which according to academia, merely depicts a strange form of unknown carriage that would have once been pulled by horses. However, some also believe that the strange animals are actually depicting a form of periscope and that the entire artifact is actually that of an ancient submarine. Additionally, there also exists another amazing artifact that we felt was worth a mention, found within private collection. Originally a religious idol, what do you think this wooden artifact is depicting? Could it actually be that of modern day paragliders, somehow sent back in time? seen and depicted by this once ancient people as a religious vision? It's an incredible, if rather imaginative thought, but it is testament to such artifacts intriguing nature. There are many incredible out of place artifacts that can be found all over earth. Each one just waiting to spark our interests. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. The chronological dating of our technological development and capabilities within antiquity are often correlated and judged upon the developments within heat management of metal refinery. For example, one of our strongest arguments against the modern-day attested view that ancient Egyptians were the builders of the Sphinx, the pyramids, the tombs, etc., is partly based upon their lack of ability in heating a furnace to a sufficient enough temperature to create the hardened metal tools needed to penetrate and carve such hard stones. The Nanjing Belt is an extremely rare find that has unsurprisingly vanished from public view, preventing any further analysis, although the existence of these artifacts was officially noted in several places and was indeed analyzed by several specialists. What is amazing regarding the Nanjing Belt is its age, but most importantly, what it is made of. In 1952, two tombs were found within Yixing City in China. One of the tombs also had a clear date inscribed upon its inside. It stated that they were buried on the 20th of September of the 7th year of Yuan Kang, the late general of Zhao, 1700 years ago. When the belt was initially retrieved, it was sent for analysis at the chemistry department of Nanjing University. The results were astonishing. 10% copper, 5% manganese, and the remaining was 85% pure aluminum. However, the development of aluminum is a very modern achievement, requiring extreme heats to smelt, heats that we believe were impossible to manage at the time. Alumina is dissolved in molten cryolite at 1000 degrees C, with a melting point of pure alumina being 2054 degrees Celsius. So, the question persists. How could such an artifact exist? A question once taken up in the West by three scholars, Butler, Glidewell, and Pritchard at St. Andrews University. The abstract sums up their work, quote, Pieces of aluminum, supposedly parts of a set of belt ornaments, were found in a Jing Dynasty tomb during excavations in the 1950s. The authenticity of these finds was questioned at the time in view of the technology required to isolate aluminum from its ore. Examination of the thermodynamic requirement for this process demonstrates unequivocally that the temperature required for this process is greatly in excess of that possible with Jing Dynasty technology, and so the finds cannot be authentic. Unfortunately, again, we find ourselves in familiar waters. So-called scholars, three in fact, with a conclusion based solely upon historical assumptions. Unfortunately, 
the artifact was seemingly too controversial for some, and it has disappeared, sadly, quite possibly forever. During a previous video titled Secret Missions into the Great Pyramid, in which we covered the most bizarre of artifacts once found in a seemingly inaccessible shaft, eventually discovered to be an entry shaft into the now-named Queen's Chamber. Just how this bronze ball, hook, and several bizarre fragments of wood found their way into the pyramids is unknown. We shared the fact that the wood had become conveniently lost, thus preventing any future dating of the artifacts or indeed this possible attempt to have once penetrated the pyramid far before the Spanish invasion of Egypt, their modern rediscovery, or indeed before the entrance to the pyramid was located. However, in a rather strange yet fortunate twist of fate, sitting within a collection of ancient Asian relics within Scotland, an Egyptian archaeologist was shocked to rediscover these cedar fragments once mislabeled and thus never classified, lost for almost 70 years, yet refound within an old cigar box. One has to wonder, with our prior hypothesis, and indeed the convenience of the wood somehow becoming lost, was this a deliberate act by someone? Possibly someone who realized the controversy attached to this artifact. What we find most compelling, however, and a possible motive to hide such an artifact are the now-realized result of modern carbon dating, showing that the wood dates to somewhere between 3341 and 3094 BC, long before the claimed construction of the pyramid. Furthermore, although many have claimed that counterweights and timber structures were utilized in the construction of the pyramids, this wood not only predates the claimed date of their creation, but does so by some 1 to 2,000 years. So any mainstream explanation for this dating anomaly is severely lacking. However, it fits perfectly with our original hypothesis and is indicative not only of a far earlier date of construction, but could indeed have been a possible successful attempt at penetrating the pyramid's deepest inner chambers, simply due to the mysterious yet impressive location in which these enigmatic artifacts were found and subsequently retrieved from. Curatorial assistant Abir Aladani found the fragments of wood as she perused the Asia section of the archives of the University of Aberdeen. Quote, Once I looked into the numbers of our Egypt records, I instantly knew what it was and that it had effectively been hidden in plain sight in the wrong collection. I'm an archaeologist and have worked on digs in Egypt but I never imagined it would be here in Northeast Scotland that I'd find something so important to the heritage of my own country." End quote. As you can imagine, we find the wooden artifacts highly compelling. We have come to a point in the age of our civilization, thanks to the efforts of countless individuals who, in the pursuit of truth, specifically the reality of a lost past, a lost civilization, once possessing now lost technologies, has finally arrived on the main stage of debate. It has come to a point of critical mass. Either having been made aware of their existence, or indeed realizing or stumbling upon this hidden truth independently, regardless, we have uncovered an immense array of proof to not only confirm their existence, but a proof now all but overwhelming to argue with. The entire planet literally littered with impossible remnants, left by what we believe was not only one, but part of an array of lost civilizations, several of which being past global superpowers. Yet I digress. The artifacts found throughout Giza, for example, demonstrate a seemingly impossible ability to move and carve stones with the tools mainstream academics would put in the builder's hands, making such creations impossible. There exists within the museum's archives themselves a smorgasbord of vases and stone cores, lay for all to see, each suggest that they were not only the result of some form of advanced lathe work, but other far superior and powerful tools far ahead of that of the copper chisel, which to claim was the culprit, we feel is now nothing more than an offense to one's intelligence, when the evidence to suggest otherwise is in front of one's face at the same time. 
We have previously covered the vases supposedly made using nothing but copper in the past, specifically the trilobe disc. Yet the many other members of the collection, known as the Saqqara vases, not only demonstrate a mastery of lathe work, but some are so impossibly delicate that when attempted to be explained with modern paradigm, one is left utterly baffled. What lost technologies or techniques were used in the creation of these vases? Article 99 from the Anorthosite Nice catalog, but one example of this extraordinary ability to either cut or possibly mold these stone vases. With wafer-thin edges and a shape formed with the lip, demonstrating they would be impossible to recreate even with the advanced technology of a lathe. Who made these seemingly impossible artifacts, along with the unmissable Great Pyramids, highly compelling?